Warning, motorsport is a dangerous activity. The events you're about to see were filmed in a controlled environment under the supervision of professionals. Do not attempt to recreate or reenact anything you see on this show. Welcome back to Off-Road Addiction. We are here at the Woodhill Forest, the Polaris Full Drive Park to be exact. We've got two and a half thousand acres to play in. We've got the Polarises. But for a change, we're gonna take the shinies out wheeling. We've got the family with us for the first part and then there is a night run on tonight. You gonna to tell us what night, we're doing for the night run? run at the night run. So we'll come back after hopefully keeping the shiny shiny, <laughs> get the Polarises. I've jury rigged up a, another light bar on there so I can uh, show Caleb the way as per usual. Light bar before lockers, so we roll. <laughs> All wheel drive. <laughs> So yeah, we'll get the trucks parked up and then for the night run we'll jump in those Polarises and show everybody how it's done. Yeah, sounds good. I'm Caleb Thompson. I'm Paul Han. And this is Off-Road Addiction TV. Let's go play. Ooh. I want to get stuck. Let's go. The Polaris Fall Drive Park is located in Woodhill Forest, near Helensville in Auckland, New Zealand. It's the perfect place for everyone to come out and have fun off-road, with people coming from all over the North Island to spend a weekend out with their mates. There's like a little man inside this truck, and he tells me what I can and can't do with my accelerator, so I'm going to have to have some words with him because I don't like being told how to use my accelerator. The massive 2,200 acre property has a wide range of tracks that are not only suitable for your shiny trucks and your slightly modified trucks, but is also a hell of a lot of fun in the more modified trucks. The park is full of beginner to advanced forestry tracks, steep hill climbs and plenty of wet, muddy, clay filled bogs. It was definitely a change for us to be out wheeling in the shiny trucks, especially when we're so used to wheeling these tracks in tough trucks. Do you reckon we um, earned our Jeep badges after doing the Jeep trip? Woo! Orange Jeep badge. We might get our overlanding badge. Yeah, that gold sticker for you. <laughs> About 100 RPM because my broken exhaust mount rattles like buggery. So, um, so yeah, that was uh, pretty hectic. But ready for a winch show. We continued picking our way through a bunch of tracks to find spots that suited the shiny trucks. And there's plenty of them if you know where to look. There are shiny tracks that suit standard trucks with no modifications, slightly modified trucks, and your plastic fantastic trucks like the Navara, either with or without modifications. There are tracks that weave between the pines and can even get a bit tight in a few spots for the larger trucks. There's also a lot of sand tracks with rutted out areas and hill climbs, some more rutted out if you're looking for something a bit more challenging. These tracks are perfect for first time off-roaders to get comfortable with different off-road terrain and get used to how their trucks handle off-road. Right, so we're just cruising along here, uh, just kind of picking our way through. It's just a main access track, but the tree's down because there was a massive storm uh, a few weeks back, and so there's a lot of trees down around the place, and uh, so there's a bit of a bypass here that we're going to get around. Gary reckons it's a little bit tight, so uh, I'll think skinny thoughts and uh, try not to get stuck, because I'm pretty good at getting stuck. So. The tracks here are always changing due to the weather and the amount of trucks going through them every weekend. As tracks start to get rougher, more and more bypasses are created so trucks that aren't as highly modified can get through in one piece and still have a good time. It's always more enjoyable when you can drive your truck home or back onto the trailer at the end of the day. I'm trying to drive a bendy bus off road. 
Since we were driving trucks with a turning circle of a bus instead of the much more nimble Polaris, it took us a few extra turns to get through the bypasses and around the tree. Yep. Your stump's just here, you've got to go over it. Oh, actually, you're just going to miss it. Because this is a working forestry, you're not actually allowed to bring a chainsaw or do any work on the trees. Once they're down, they must stay down, and you've got to leave them for the owners of the park to deal with. It is a lot better if you can make a bypass that doesn't cause a lot of damage to the surrounding trees and bush. We want to keep this beautiful forest healthy to make sure we always have a fun place to come and wheel. That is, until they chop the trees down once they're old enough. We need to look after as many off-road properties as we can to make sure we keep these places open and enjoyable for all. Off-Road Addiction TV is brought to you by Maxis New Zealand, Force 4, Polaris New Zealand, and Red Arc Electronics. The sandy hill climbs are always a bit of fun in the tow rigs, especially when you start competing to see who can actually make it to the top. Playing in these shiny trucks is definitely uh, something we haven't done in a while, but it is quite nice getting back to basics and not having to worry about all this flash stuff. Um, except for panel damage, it's one thing we've got to keep in mind. So we're just playing on the very easy sandy stuff, a couple of hill climbs and whatnot, which is cool. I'm um, just going to go down this hill here and then we're going to go find another track. After all this extreme off-roading, we had worked up a bit of an appetite, so we found a nice spot to stop for lunch. I've got to say, uh, you know, we're, we're quite hungry after all that hard work of not smashing panels into the bank. Um, it's quite nice to go back to basics. Yeah, making a very, very easy track. Very a little hard. bit challenging. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's good fun. It's nice. We've always either had the Polarises or semi-tough trucks and whatnot, so quite nice to take the shinies out and just kind of enjoy the, the forest. And as slow going as this has been, it's um, quite rewarding when you make up a, an easy track in a vehicle that's not set up to do stuff like that. It's quite cool, but um, looking forward to jumping in the Polarises and having a bit of fun getting covered in mud, as we love to do. We were down to the last few hours before the night run, so we went in search of one more track to do. We ended up on one that had plenty of obstacles to keep things interesting for the shinies, including winding between trees, up sandy hill climbs, and around tight sloping corners.
it took a bit of guidance to get through some tight spots in the trees, especially for the patrol. One spot in particular got interesting where the track sloped up the side of a hill, so you had to be careful not to tip into the side of a tree. It got pretty close with the rooftop tent sitting on top, giving it that extra height. Shiny, everything's extreme. Off Road Addiction TV is brought to you by Factor Fifty Five Motormark Big Brown Industries and trail gear. <laughs> what? That's right, I suppose. <laughs> Sweet. I've got a shovel. I've got rock sliders. I've got a shovel. <laughs> you're a rock slider, they move like this. Yeah, it'll you be should hear it when you're driving down it'll the road. It'll be your rear tray. You know that tray you just got panel bedded? That is just going to fold it up into the truck again. Probably, because you think you'll be able to go that way, but you'll actually end up there. I reckon this one. Up to you guys. How much do you want to fill it? Do you reckon it's going to make it drivable? I was just going to straddle it anyway, but... Yeah. It's only going to lean in anyway, so what, you're saying sit right up here? I'm just going to stick it where he is. Right, so we've just jumped out of the truck to have a look. There's um, a bit of a drop off. You wouldn't think much of it if you're in um, in a tough truck or the Polaris or something like that, but because we're in the shinies, uh, we could come down potentially and land on top of it and do some body damage, so we're not really keen about that. Uh, Paul's just lining up to have a crack at it now, so let's see how he does it, and I'll try to copy, maybe. Now, since Paul is first up to tackle the track, he's taking it slow to make sure he clears the trees on both sides, as well as the large roots coming out of the ground. It's pretty difficult to see what's in front of you at angles like these, so, it's always good to have a spotter to tell you where to steer and let you know if there's anything in the way that could damage the truck. So you got a tree root on your right hand side. Uh, you should be alright. Carry on straight, lift hands down a little. Uh, I can't see it, so just stop it. Lift hands down a little. Yeah, well, you're you alright, it shouldn't have been too much, you're just coming up and down. The rest of it's pretty straightforward, just like you're going to be able to Now it's my turn to go down the hill and see if the Navara is up to the task. Oh, that tree stump. Me. You hit that tree stump, did you? Didn't even see it, I must have. That's what I told you, it was adjacent to that tree. Just dropped under there, hey, um, Caleb didn't listen to me about the stump or maybe I was mucking around too long down there. He's managed to come over a tree stump and it's actually ramped so the back side of the A-arm has actually dropped immediately over it. So um, really we need to go that way. So, um, 
So this is what you do when you don't own a set of max tracks so you don't have a high lift jack. Just use a bush. Nature's your friend when nature's yeah, not. Yeah, find it easy, just not get stuck. Okay, ready when you are, Caleb. You're on a good line. Keep coming straight towards me. Just watching that stump, obviously, before you drop away. Yep, you're good. Your front is about to drop off now. Yep, you can see that tree. Get rid of the clearance from that one. Yep, straight towards me, bud. Okay, here Yeah, you're well loaded up on both stills here, eh? Uh, so, I don't quite have the same amount of clearance that Paul does, and I got a little bit tangled up on the um, plastic uh, fake rock sliders. You know, everyone's got fake beadlocks and fake rock sliders. Uh, so hopefully we haven't made too much of a mess of the sills. So what we're going to do is get the general up here, uh, which we've been using as our film vehicle for the day. And uh, we're just going to pull myself backwards and then that's kind of pretty much going to wrap us up because the gates are opening for the night run soon and we want to jump in the Blarises and go have a bit of fun so watch this space this recovery will be uh, interesting man these things are capable We're going to give this a shot with the um, general here. We'll just give him a wee bit of a pull back, see if it can um, unload those sills because he's not going anywhere and he's going to do more damage going forward. So uh, rather than bring the patrol all the way around, we we'll just uh, lift up the hill and the uh, general there and see if the uh, Polaris winch can do it. Polaris ends its keep. Well done. Well done. Wow, so rock sliders, snorkel. The list never ends. Um, this thing's going to get some upgrades soon. Gary's going to do a snorkel for us. And uh, I've got an x rox rear bar, which is why it looks so ugly at the moment. We're just getting ready to put that on. After we get the rear bar on and get the snorkel done, it might be time to save up and uh, get the x rox sliders on here, I think because these plastic ones are known to twist your sills out when you land on them, so I'm hoping that we haven't done that. With the Navara finally rescued, thanks to the Polaris General, it was time to start making our way out. The Navara went back the same way we came, through the tight trees and back to the car park, because it was time to go out and have some fun in the Polaris units. It's bound to be a pretty fun night, and we can't wait to see where these units can go. Sometimes you just got to think skinny thoughts and hope for the best. Well, we made it out at the end of the tracks just here, so uh, yeah, all good. Time to jump into Polaris's and head into the darkness. Coming up on the next episode, the tow rigs are parked up and it's time for the night run to begin. The Polaris General and the Razor Turbo come out to play on the more hardcore tracks with plenty of mud bogs, hill climbs and off camber wheel lifting action. I don't want to be cold and wet for the rest of the night so we're going to drive around the bog holes. Just to stay true to form, stuck again.
hardcore stuff really, uh, you know, don't want to scratch the trucks, considering we have to get to work on Monday, so. Yeah, it's right, Carol, just doing voice over while we're back on the radio here. Carol, Carol, sorry about that. Here we have Paul. Wild ginger. Oh, would you like more? You say please? please. Okay. Good boy. And what do you say when you have some? You say ta. And you say ta. 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 <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> Anytime. So, yeah, no, it's been quite good. It's quite nice just going slow for once and. <laughs> Don't litter. <laughs> and enjoying the, uh, oh. the entertainment. <laughs> okay, off the radio now so I can talk to Caleb, please. 